so hi everyone thanks a lot for coming so i i, I should possibly start at uh, saying that we are recording this uh, this 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 talk carlos is, is okay with you right uh, yeah yeah it's perfect yeah, yeah. sorry i didn't ask you yeah and so it's a uh, it's a pleasure, uh, Carlos, to have you here. So thank you very much for accepting the the invitation. So Carlos will present uh, directional uh, predictability tests with the. This is a joint work with the Gene. So uh, few few things. So you can uh, either if you want to be identified, you can always like you know uh, unmute yourself and ask the question, or if you prefer. Uh, uh, you know, you can write your uh, your your question in the chat, and so we're going to control that. And I would like also to thank uh, very much uh, uh, Tativik and uh, uh, Tommaso for uh, joining us as a, as a guest uh, panelist. And so, thank you very much for for your time for this. And uh, uh, Carlos, the the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Adel. It's great to to be here with you, and thank you very much to, to organizers and all the attendants of all this talk. As Adel said, this is entitled uh, Directional Predictability Test, and it's a joint work with, uh, with a student of mine that is now at the uh, University of Barcelona. Okay, so um, the idea is very simple. Uh, it's testing about predictability, okay? So we want to predict the level of a series with their own path. So this is the classical problem that you find in, uh, in finance and economics and many other sciences. So this is the simplest version of, of, of the predictability problem. We don't have extra, extra variables to use in the prediction. And this is like a preliminary problem as well in, in statistical modeling of any, of any time series. Uh, the problem is very simple, but can be complex depending on, on the restrictions you put in the, in the specification of the prediction function, whether it's linear or non-linear. So this leads to the classical uh, hypothesis of white noise, where you only focus on linear functions, or the prediction per, per se, that is the mathematical difference assumption, whether the conditional expectation given the pass is, is constant. Let's normalize everything to, to zero. And also, uh, the complication arises uh, in the statistical methodology depending on which alternative uh, you may consider, whether you are looking for any potential deviation from, from the no prediction case, whether you have general no parametric uh, alternatives leading to only test or you have some uh, model in mind, some parametric deviation leading to, to directional test. That is the, the, the case what I want to address in, the, in, in this paper. Okay, there is a huge literature on the, on the problem of predictability, just to organize this a little bit, but of course this is not by any means uh, complete. Uh, we have many omnibus tests for all kinds of, 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 pre, of no prediction or no predictability situation. We have white noise or martingale difference, so even the strongest serial independence when do not allow any connection between the past and the present. Okay, white noise is going to be linear predictability, and it's going to be all tests based on, on correlations, starting from the classical both peers and, uh, that impose a whole independence to derive the asymptotic properties to relaxations of that that come later. For instance, uh, this paper of a lot of number is uh, saving or show with different measures of uh, of dependence that impose or allow for for white noise or and correlation then we can find martingale difference test type of test that is more complicated because then there are these are tests for a function so need to put more structure or deal with the with the problem of or describing the conditional expectation and as well as white noise there is the problem of determining the, the lag how much pass you want to introduce in the in the, in the testing. And finally, there is this classical literature on, on testing independence, starting from the pairwise independence of the, of the paper that have been added to time series by Scott, Tolstein, and, and, and later papers. Okay. Uh, in econometrics in particular, um, there are many tests as well uh, uh, the, uh, where they test this hypothesis, some versions of this hypothesis at least, against some particular uh, parametric models. Basically, they are linear models, but in principle, we know that see, there is linear predictability, there is also any kind of, of predictability. The classical ones are Godfrey and Breus type of tests against a, ARP or MAQ, okay? No both is at the same time, because when you have an ARMA structure, 
uh, some problem size. And then they have the problems of no identification of parameters under the null. And this was addressed by, by Andrew Zaploberger with sub uh, LM tests, so like likelihood ratio tests and exponential uh, weighted and so on. And they were later extended by Nanker, Mason, and Sevier in this paper. And also by Lane, Mason, and Saikonen later, uh, uh, in this other paper where they changed uh, the restrictions on the ARMA model and instead of requiring to be uh, causal and invertible, they impose uh, non invertibility. And this changed completely the problem. Not only the statistical problems of no identification, but also the, the implications of, of the testing, testing hypothesis under the node, the testing model under, under the node. So in this paper, we are going to extend this, this approach of Lane, Mason, and Seikonem uh, to the general case where the innovations of the model are allowed to be Martingale difference instead of uh, IID as, as they use. Okay, so just to be precise on what they, they do in this paper, they propose uh, different tests. They propose wall and likelihood ratio tests based on maximum likelihood estimation uh, for non Gaussian data. So this is key because it's the, 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 the key assumption that allows you to distinguish between linear, linear predictability and non linear predictability. And the Gaussianity both are the same and they implied independence as well. Okay. And as I, I just mentioned before, they use uh, or they construct the test and, and the theory of maximum likelihood estimation and the and their independence. I need to be, to be more precise. And they propose three, three tests uh, encompassing linear predictability and non-linear predictability. And they are parametric because they focus on ARMA models. In particular, they 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 base a discussion on, on the ARMA one, one case, as, as we will do here. But I said they, they impose non-invertibility for, for a good reason that we are going to, to see in a second. Is that when, when in a non-invertible ARMA11, you impose a restriction on the quality of the roots, or the reciprocals of the roots, okay, you obtain a, a restricted all-pass ARMA11 parameter. And as we're going to see in a second, these all-pass uh, models are very special because they are uncorrelated, okay? Uh, but they are possibly dependent and in principle non-linear predictable. Okay, so it's, uh, it's a way of, of describing a series that uh, uh, that is uncorrelated, it's a white noise, but it still is, is predictable. So it's something in between, right? It's, and it's not a martingale because of this non-linear predictability. So it's something between a, a martingale and uh, when a special uh, white noise. It's a white noise, but with some structure in it. And the nice thing is that if you test restrictions on that, you can test against the, the preliminary uh, innovation, whether ideas in land and maze or other one like uh, Martin Gendifis in our case, or see the restriction that uh, in the parameters uh, is not true, then you end up with an ARMA model, which is linear predictable, has some correlation. Okay, so we're going to discuss uh, about these, these all, all pass models. The third test they propose is precisely testing uh, all pass against ARMA. So the restriction and not restriction. We're going to see in a second the, the next, how this hypothesis nests uh, nicely. So in this paper, what we do is extend the, this idea of, of LANE to, to the case where the innovations are marking a difference, okay? To fill this gap that when the all pass model is rejected, then you have independence. So in our case, when the all-pass model is, uh, uh, is rejected, then what we end up is with something that is, is, is not unpredictable, it's a martingale difference, but we allow dependence. For instance, heteroscedasticity, uh, uh, conditional heteroscedasticity. Okay? And for achieving that, we need to, to, to in one hand, generalize this massive molecular theory. So instead of using uh, maximum likelihood, we are going to use some estimation based on, on dependent measures. I want to describe in a second. And also, we need to rustify the test for allowing this higher order dependence in the Martin and Difference innovations. Okay, so these are the two uh, technical contributions of, of the better. Otherwise, the methodology and the motivation is, is basically the same as, as this with this idea that uh, in the simplest case, our uh, innovations are not uh, independent as uh, as Martin and Differences. And we are going to see smart, but we will say something during the presentation, is how this all pass generate this, this dependence. Despite being uh, white noise, 
they interact with the dependence that are in the innovations, in our marketing and difference innovations in our case. And the key thing, as I said, is that uh, all past processes are uh, non-linearly predictable. Rosenblatt did the proof for IID because in IID they can, he can, he could be able to to construct the the characteristics function of the of the process because everything is linear and ID, so you could use this theory. Uh, however, in, when you rule out the independence, it's not so easy. Well, it's impossible to follow this approach. And what we do is to argue in terms of higher order moments to show that see enough moments exist, you can you can build some forecasting functions uh, that predict the, the current observations given non-linear functions of the past, basically squares, cubes, or any any other combination. Okay, so just to right, uh, motivate this. Just a little, just yeah. a little clarification. So here, you, so here we also have the classical, uh, you know, uh, like the estimators will be in, uh, inconsistent, right? Uh, uh, in, well, in principle, much of the theory justify under IID, for instance. So uh, yes. Okay. So, so when you add serial correlation there, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So the problem is that see, your theory is based on independence. Of course, when you allow for marginal difference might not hold and uh, okay. you know the typical thing is that in the worst case or in the best case at least you should adapt the asymptotic variance to reflect this uh, higher order dependence in the asymptotic uh -huh. variance of estimates so that yeah. applies to the classical approach right i mean when yeah, you yeah, number, you yeah number... exactly the same yes this theory as i mentioned by for instance uh, by lobato nankervis and saving that is based on romano and thom's paper on uncorrelated but mixing uh, data is based on getting robust estimates of the asymptotic variance. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, the same happens with the variance ratio type of test that under marginal and difference need to be justified in order and to you, get you, the right. Your approach, uh, your approach deals uh, it deals with this. Yeah. So that's that's another that's another plus. Yeah. Okay. But I said our uh, here the technical uh, innovations is that we have to adapt the estimation. Uh, for Martingale, uh, we have to get rid of final alternatives to maximum likelihood. On the other hand, we have to robustify, robustify the, the inference in order to account for this higher order dependence when you estimate parameters and, and so on. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, so to get into, into the details of, of, the, of the hypothesis we test, this is the typical ranking of hypothesis. Okay. The, I, I, I write ID for independence, but just to fix and simplify matters. So as we know, uh, in the idea of the most restricted the hypothesis, then we have a non-predictability of any kind. Then we have white noise that is no linear predictability. Um, see, this no white noise is that there is some linear dependence, okay, on some, some serial correlation or autocorrelation. Okay, so uh, see, we write down ARMA models. Surprisingly, ARMA models interact uh, with, with white noise. So there is a here some, some uh, okay, uh, common processes that are precisely the old past processes, okay? You can, of course, define ARMA only with, with uncorrelation innovation, uncorrelated innovation or martingale degrees of independence. And whatever they, they do, there are a, a subclass of ARMA models, that the old past models were still white noise. The important thing about this, these two sets of models is that in principle, and no ARMA model is a martingale difference. So there is no connection uh, overlapping between these two, the square boxes and the, on the, and the round boxes, on the round uh, sets. Okay, so this Freddy is the, the proof of, uh, of the argument of Rosenblatt. For martingale difference is a, an argument based on moments, so there is some correlation. Of course, both, both uh, arguments require the existence of some number of moments, at least three or four, depending on the argument. So it's not a general implication. You have to, so this is subject to some further assumptions on the existence of moments. In fact, the original, uh, the original hypothesis needs some, some moment restriction as well. For Martin and difference, you need the existence of first moment, and for why not, you need the existence of second moments. So anyway, there are some moment restrictions for all this ranking of this, of this description. So what uh, uh, Laniatol uh, do is uh, doing or uh, proposing hypothesis for these three three cases. So uh, they test independence or no predictability, or strong non predictability against general ARMA. So this is most general uh, test. 
the general map could be with correlation or without correlation, okay? And uh, okay, and they propose a two like a two-step test for that. First, testing against all pass, so all pass is still white noise, and then they test all pass against ARMA. ARMA in the sense that there is correlation, so this is a no linear predictability against predictability. Okay, so this is the skin of the other test. What we add in, in this paper is just basically the same three tests, but departing from martingale difference. So this is what we do. Okay, so we have a test for martingale difference against a general ARMA. So this is why we need the robustification because our hypothesis is going to be more complicated in principle. We have, we have to allow for higher order dependence in the martingale conditional elasticity. Will be a little bit more complex because we have nonlinear functions of the past. Uh, and there are general classes of, of heteroscedasticity, let's say. And we also propose the, the, the two-step approach. Testing martingale against all pass. All pass, in, in principle, driven by martingale difference, but here under the alternative, we don't, we don't know which, which, is, uh, which case we are here under the ID or, or not. And then, again, test again, all pass, that is white noise, against ARMA that, in principle, is linear predictable. Okay, so this so this is the scheme. So we also propose a further test that is of a specification that is like a, a derivation of this. So I will be I will explain here. Okay, so I will mention we need to change the, the methodology. We cannot use a maximal likelihood, or we could use, but we need a further justification of that. So it will be another approach to be for sure. And for that, uh, I use my 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 previous research on on estimates based on dependent measures. So we have a version for imposing independence of matching difference that does not need to specify the distribution of the of the of the innovations. Um, my my proposal is just taking a home generalized spectral densities, if you're familiar with them. Uh, they are constructed based on the characteristic function. So they are exponential transformations of the data. So that's why I'm not linear and I'm able to to check for independence or marking a difference. And I use the, the test criterion that Hohn uses as a loss function for the estimation. So it's, it's as simple as this. So I transform the test in, an, in, a, in a loss function for, for estimation. So in this case, I don't need a, a distributional assumption. Uh, still, I need some, some regularity assumptions on, on, on moments, for instance, and, and also on, on mixing to control for dependence. And the interesting thing of this, um, um, my approach is that it provides identification under no fundamentals. No fundamentals is either non invertibility, that is going to be one of the key ingredients here, um, uh, or no causality as well. That uh, in principle, we are not going to, to work with that, with that here. Um, also, in principle, see, despite not imposing distributional assumptions under some circumstances, it's possible to show that this approach can uh, achieve efficiency or some kind of or non parametric efficiency without assuming uh, the true distribution. So, uh, in the ideal case, uh, there is a, this is a good criterion to, to be used and, and to justify both estimation as in, as in my previous paper and as testing as in, as in this one. There could be many other approaches apart from using maximum likelihood adapted to general settings. Uh, you can measure independence or even uh, predictability by, by other methods like uh, by CDFs. Okay, and this is uh, uh, one of the other papers that Gene is, is working on on his thesis, right? Or you can use harder other moments. As I say, it's, it's a way of checking out for, for predictability in the nonlinear case, where you can try to see whether you can predict levels with squares and some other combinations of moments. Um, it's a classical paper by, by Rancy Montenegro, and it's a, a paper that we did in the frequency domain with higher order spectra. Right, as I said, we can extend this also for for higher order uh, ARMA models, but but in principle, see, you want to get things simple and, and more or less powerful with a very simple model with one or two parameters, uh, you can get uh, nice results. And as I said, we develop uh, a nonlinear uh, specification test based on 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 similar criteria as we do here. Basically, we will see whether a general ARMA model requires uh, one additional all pass factor. And we see this all, fact, all pass factor uh, is a replacement or an alternative to some arch or large type of modeling of the innovations. 
Okay, so this is the, the product of force for, for the rest of, of the time. So first discuss this, this idea uh, be, uh, of this distinction between invertible and non-invertible models, ARMA 1-1 models, and see what is the problem that uh, the original literature has for this testing, a whole line with this uh, simple uh, modification allow us to, to solve on one hand the, the, the testing methodology on one hand and allow for, for more interesting uh, uh, null hypothesis in a sense to, to be tested. And then we'll discuss a little bit more about all past testers, all past filters, hypothesis, the hypothesis being tested um, and the test themselves. Okay, so this is the, the, the usual invertible ARMA, invertible and causal ARMA 1-1 model. Okay, the, this is basically the, the notation that Lane uh, used in the paper. Okay, um, the only strange thing maybe is that we have a minus here, but it's not too important. So that you get nice polynomials here. Otherwise the parameters are the usual ones, are less than one, so everything is nice, uh, perfect. Our contribution is that we use Martingale difference for the innovations instead of IID as, as they do, but otherwise it's the same. So in this case, it's easy to check that the model is invertible because this restriction of modulus of zero less, less than one. So we can factorize or use the, the, the usual uh, uh, lag polynomials in both cases. The, this minus leads to this uh, strange thing maybe, but not too, not, too, not too different for what we expect in practice, right? And uh, what we can introduce is a parameter on the difference. This gamma is going to be the difference between the AR and the MA parameter in such a way that, that uh, uh, when we impose the null that this gamma is equal to zero, what we have is that these two polynomials okay, are the same and they cancel, right? And we have the, the, the fact that in this particular case, the ARMA 1-1 model collapses to uh, to just the martingale difference in, in my case, or any other assumption that you impose on, on the innovation. The problem of that, of course, is that when gamma is zero, because of this cancellation, the phi parameter, okay, cancel on both sides. Okay, so phi becomes no identified under the null, right? And, and the problem is that when you propose any test of this, you have to account for, uh, for this fact or lack of identification, and that's why you typically uh, use this type of sub methodology, so all sub LM tests to account for all potential cases uh, or potential values of phi and the uh, and the and the and the, the null, in which case the, the parameter is not identified. So the methodology is more complicated, and as you see, uh, uh, in the in the case that when the null is imposed, we recover just the innovation. However, when the model is not invertible, things are going to be pretty different. Okay, so if you compare the, the non-invertible case with the previous one, it looks almost the same because the parameters have the same restriction and innovation. So this part is identically the same. And this looks the same, but the parameters have shifted. Before it was here and now it's here. So I can come back one second. So here is less than one, so the pass is discounted faster. So this is a, a, a minimum... Uh, um, sorry, a maximum phase because this the current shock has higher impact or larger impact than the, the bus. And in the non-invertible model, this is reversed. The today shock is discounted uh, stronger. Okay. So this changes everything because when you describe this with the usual lab polynomial, now we have the inverse here. And we have to adjust, adjust here by the parameters. So we are assuming that this is different from zero in order to, to account for this. Right, and now we don't have a, a cancellation. When we impose the equality between uh, both parameters that are restricted to be less than one as before, so these restrictions are the same, there is no cancellation now, okay? And we have the so-called uh, all-pass model, okay? Because these parameters are the same. And there is no cancellation because as you see, even if these are the same, this inverse, so this is reverse it, and there is no way uh, they cancel. So under the null, the, the parameters are the same. Instead of the recovering the innovation as before, we recover the innovations but filter with this so-called all-pass filter. Okay, an all-pass filter is a rational filter where the AR root is the reciprocal of the MA root, and this has a very special properties because this all-pass model is going to be 
white noise, but it's not martingale. So the martingale difference property is lost by this linear transformation over here. Despite by some uh, funny uh, cancellations, the correlations happen to be identically equal, uh, equal to zero. Okay, so this property is parallel with IID and martingale difference innovations. With martingale differences, the difference is that the nonlinearity dependence on, on the innovations is uh, is complemented by this linear transformation introduced by the by the old pass filter. Okay, so more about the, uh, on the old pass filters. So I said an old pass filter is uh, in general uh, P or the model. We are discussing just order one, where the uh, MA parameter on the numerator is just the reciprocal of the AR parameter. So with this restriction, the model is causal. This is the autoregressive part. And the moving average part discounts faster the current or stronger the current shock than the past. That's why we have we have this inverse, uh, this inverse over there. Otherwise, this filter behaves nicely and, and everything converts to zero fast because the causality restriction makes that everything is nice and, and, and only depends on the on the past. So this is this zero. Here is telling us that this is a causal a causal filter with a with a more uh, more restriction. What happens, as I was mentioning you, is that the all pass filter series, okay, uh, suffer a nice cancellation because the product of the of the transfer function by the by the complex conjugate of the transfer function is unity. So these factors cancel each other. And we end up with the same second order spectral density of the innovations that under martingale, ID, or white noise, whatever, is constant. Uh, therefore, there is no single correlation. So all pass are, are white noise. But in general, they have some higher order dependence. And I'm going to be nonlinear predictable. For instance, if you go for the third order uh, spectral density, and you think that this exists in the sense that the, the, the data is, is has three moments and is not a null in the sense that there is an asymmetry either in the marginal distribution or, or in higher order dependence, higher order lags, let's say. Okay, now this cancellation that happens for the for the uh, transfer function when in the square case, let's say, in the, cap, in the second order spectral density is no longer true when you have triples or higher order products. Okay, there is no cancellations here possible. Okay, and in principle, this spectral density is no longer zero and is not constant. So therefore, there are some symmetry coefficients, dynamic symmetry coefficients. In general, these are the third of the cumulants and lags J and K. In general, there are some, maybe not all, depending on the structure of, of, the, of the innovations, of the mapping a difference type of thing, whether you have arch effects or, or not. But in principle, some of these you know, uh, uh, higher order cumulus are going to be zero, right? So all pass don't introduce linear dependence because the second order spectral is constant, but in general can introduce higher order dependence. Um, it's well known that they're able to describe uh, arch effects, in particular conditional heteroscedasticity and, and other effects like, like this. Okay, so just focusing on the hypothesis that uh, we test in our paper, so these are the three, they are exactly the same as, as in Lani. The only difference is that I assume that the silos are marking. So that's why I have this marking and difference. So the first one is the, is the test of all restricted all pass ARMA model against the general ARMA model. In both cases, it's restricted to be non-invertible, but in all pass, the, there is a relationship between the, the AR parameter and the MA have, a, have to be the same. And the alternative, they are different. So it's a general ARMA, ARMA 1 1 model in this case, but restricted uh, to be invertible, non invertible, sorry, in the sense that both parameters phi and zero are less than one. And the other two tests are martingale against some, some uh, parametric alternative. Either all pass, so it's martingale against white noise. Okay, so it's a very so let's say difficult hypothesis because uh, they are close, uh, close, uh, uh, close hypothesis, but in and correlation. So basically, it's uh, the null of no predictability against nonlinear predictability. 
okay, because all part recall is still uh, white noise. So basically, either the data is, is martingale or is uh, all pass. Or the general one that is no predictability of any kind against linear predictability. That is the non-invertible arm, where in principle there is linear predictability as usual, as a usual uh, uh, arm one. The non-invertibility makes that the autocorrelation depends on the parameters in a different way, but it's just a single correlated ARMA typical uh, series with another restriction. But uh, as you know, the correlation structure is the same as, uh, as uh, for the invertible one. The parametrization is different, but describe exactly the same autocorrelation function as the invertible version of the, of the ARMA 1 model. And finally, this is the additional test that we do is the specification one is where, where we think that on top of the, of the usual ARMA model, right? The, that is well specified, that is the correct specification where we achieve marking a difference uh, errors. Again, the alternative where the, the errors are not still marking a difference because they have an all pass components that is described by this other, this other additional, uh, additional uh, filter. Yeah. So basically, this test is designed to the case there is, where. There is a question, yeah. Carlos. Uh, yeah, tell me. Uh, just, uh, oh. just a clarification question. When you mm -hmm. talk about predictability here, uh, this is assuming that the errors are not Gaussian, right? Yeah, all this discussion I mentioned before, but I would not mention it now. All that, all that essentially is about non-Gaussianity because if the errors are Gaussian, then we know that uh, we cannot distinguish uh, independence from uncorrelation and from Martingale that is just in between. So in all these cases, all the hypothesis collapse to the same to the same one. So you're so, not going to so you're doing, going to do everything conditional on Gaussian because that's like a nuisance, another type of nuisance parameter that is not identified under the norm. Exactly. Well, uh, not identified. You could you could try to test. It's a it's a very good question whether you can try to test for non Gaussianity without assuming uh, invertibility or non invertibility. Yeah, it's a good question. Is uh, I'm not aware of any test that are doing exactly this because uh, because all procedures somehow depending on this non Gaussianity. Definitely the maximum likelihood ones are my own ones as well. But for instance, I have, I have a student that is, is working in, in, the, in, the, in the structural VAR or Barma case, where not only his, but there are other papers that try to propose estimates of the non Gaussian dimension of a vector. And, and the nice thing of, of the proposal of my student is that he tries to do that without achieving identification of the structural model. Basically, without knowing the location of the roots or without knowing the rotation of the Barma innovations. So it's a, it's a very interesting question. In, in the, in the Sorry, university, I didn't, I didn't want to, to do that. The rail. <laughs> I just thought that. Would... Yeah, yeah. So, no, yeah. so it's, a very, it's a very relevant question. So I, I'm working all the time on the assumption that the data is non Gaussian. I don't know what happens if the data is finally Gaussian. I guess everything will break down at some point. I don't know exactly how robust it is. The, are these procedures to to final Gaussianity or that? Okay, so just to continue with this and, and finish this presentation of hypothesis. So this hypothesis is relevant. I said here to be a, a, a substitute for Bospir type of test because uh, recall that all these hypotheses are white noise. So Bospir cannot distinguish any of this. Everything is white noise. Whether it's be, uh, pure marking and difference. Or is an all pass model based of the martingale. All of them are white noise. So, well, post piece should not be consistent in any case here. And also, it's a complement or alternative to arch effect type of diagnostics or LIMAC type of tests and, and all, these, all these ones. Uh, because because uh, uh, the all pass, uh, the all, all pass is not a martingale, while in arch, you assume that the data is a martingale. And you are testing for predictability in the squares, let's say. And recall that all pass is not a martingale. So under this alternative, right, uh, you still uh, 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 allow for nonlinear predictability. OK? So here we allow for nonlinear predictability, as well as for heteroscedacity. So all pass is a strain object where you have nonlinear predictability and, and heteroscedasticity. 
just induced by, by this simple linear filtering. So the heterogeneity may be already present on the martingale or could be just generated uh, by the all-pass filter on, on its own. Okay, so how we work on our test? So we base our methodology on Lagrange multiplier test because of simplicity. In principle, in the, Mont in the Monte Carlo, I don't do, but in the application, I use wall test based on, on, on the estimates themselves. And also, we can think of likelihood ratio tests. But so far, the paper is running on only for Lagrange multipliers. And to derive the Lagrange multiplier, I, I use this loss function. So is, uh, this is the whole statistic for testing Martingale. The only difference I introduce in, here is to parameterize this instead of plugging in residuals based on the particular estimate of the parameter, I, I made this function to depend on the parameter value, this uh, zero here, okay? And what I do is minimize that. So these are measures of, dependent, of dependence. And in particular, this is designed it for the Martingale difference. So it's the, the derivative of the characteristic function. Right? As we know, is the, it's the first moment generator. And uh, that's why we have this first derivative here. And this is no more that the autocovariance of, as I mentioned before, of a very special nonlinear transformation of past residuals. Okay, so this is the current residual. This is lacks of the residuals, and this and this empirical covariance is no more than the joint characteristic function evaluated in U and B minus the product of the marginals. All right. Well, this is just the, the usual empirical, uh, empirical joint characteristic function. What this derivative is doing, this derivative is doing the following. When we evaluate this at zero, okay, and we just take the derivative, at the end, since we evaluate at zero, this disappear, and our uh, auto generalized autocovariance, what it's doing basically is measuring the correlation of current errors or residuals in this case for the, for the test, depending on the restriction you have. and uh, Rich class of nonlinear transformation of lags of the residual. I say that it's a, a rich class because this depends on this V parameter. It's the characteristic function parameter or the frequency parameter that in principle is changing because you would like to integrate this out, okay, for the whole domain of the, of the characteristic function. Okay, so it's just, uh, as you see, it's a test of nonlinear predictability of current errors given the pass. The part described in a very general nonlinear, nonlinear, nonlinear way, right? So our test statistic is plotting this a uh, 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 very simple to 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 motivate because, as you see, they are essentially a sort of a robust wall test. These are the restricted residuals under the the given null. In this case, is the Martingale difference, so there is no parameters to be estimated. So it's a simple hypothesis. And this C and U are these nonlinear transformations of the pass. In particular, C, that is the general case for the ARMA, the old pass is just a restriction. So that's why it's parameterized with this simple relationship between the restricted parameter and, and the general ones. So as you see, this depends on this uh, integral of this nonlinear transformation of the residuals, just yes, center in order to have uh, a zero mean, and the the important factor that distinguishes this approach from the general home test using uh, no particular uh, alternative in mind is that this transformation uses the model A, okay, under the alternative. So these functions are proportional to the model scores, okay. So depending on the model, you will have here different weights, different functions that determine which your test is looking at. Otherwise, uh, will be uh, home test. You don't have this special weighting will be a home test with no particular alternative in mind against you are looking at. Just to, to have a look to, to the shape of this transformation for the P equal to one case, the ARMA one case, these are the, the functions. As you see, there are different derivatives of the characteristic function, or the empirical characteristic function, uh, integrated by this uh, weighting measure. That see this weighting measure has a nice expression or cross form expression for the characteristic function. Okay, everything is cross form, and in particular for W Gaussian, uh, as you can see, uh, these functions are squares essentially of the pass weighted by, by some other linear transformations here of the, of the pass themselves. And the same for the second component. 
These components are because, uh, because of this non-invertibility leaves a lax player role in the, in the derivative of the, of the model, in a sense. So that's why we have like two components uh, over here. So in, for computational point of view, it's, it's straightforward and you don't need to do numerical intervention over here. You could do see if W has a very complicated expression, but it is what you don't need. For testing the all pass model against uh, ARMA, it's a, it's, a, it's a more complicated situation because we have one parameter under the null, but in this case, the parameter is well identified. There's no problem. And using maximum likelihood as LANE or using my method, you could estimate that, okay, under the restricted model. So you can estimate this without a further problem in a restricted uh, model. And the only thing you need to account for to construct the, the Lagrange multiplier test that is similar to the one that we had before with another related transformation, this V, but essentially is just testing correlation of current errors or residuals with the past, is to have the proper standardization. And this standardization has to account both for the parameter est estimation effect and for conditional heterogeneity or general nonlinear dependence from, from the past. So we got here the, the function. So this is the typical uh, new West type of, of correction. And this is the, uh, the parameter estimation in the usual way as you write down the, the algebra for the Lagrange multiplier test. So it's not a big deal. And this is the way we get the restricted estimates. So the start is for the, for the restriction that we are imposing and in the null to get the, the old pass system. And finally, the, the residual test, the specification test is based on the same approach. So only what we are doing here is uh, Augmenting any ARMA model described by the uh, autoaggressive uh, moving average part with an additional all pass factor. This all pass factor may explain some, some remaining nonlinear predictability on one hand, or also some type of conditional heterogeneity dependence in the errors. So, in principle, this factor could account for both things. Maybe it's not the best model in some cases, definitely not, not always because maybe there are real HFS or complicated other uh, higher order dynamics, or maybe there's some non-linear factor that cannot be dis described by this sort of simple linear model. So the nice thing is that this is a linear model, but it still allows for non-linear predictability. And the test is just testing for, for whether you need that, again, in a composite way that you have to account for, for, uh, for uh, previous estimation of the ARMA, ARMA component in the residuals. I didn't say much about the asymptotic theory, but the theory is a standard one. All the tests have chi-square distribution with the degrees of freedom depending on the, on the hypothesis uh, tested. And in principle, are consistent against these parametric alternatives. And the general non-parametric, we don't know. You have to do the analysis one by one. And I guess against many of them will be consistent, but I'm pretty sure that you can find some of them against you have zero power and your test will not be consistent. But in practice, uh, I expect this to be working well. And, and this is the argument of Lane as well. That is a simple thing. Also, when this, as I mentioned, some, yeah. Sorry, just a quick question. Uh, what, what if what if you had a, a more complicated all pass filter with, with say a higher order polynomial? Yeah, in principle, you can test again. This is against the first order. In principle, you can have as many factors as, as you wish here. And you can test against all this, but this is the typical problem. So you, you have expect... this another alternative um, and you test against many parameters, you may expect to lose power. Si you have three and you test against the three or against one, I'm not sure in final samples uh, which test will be more powerful. Maybe uh, testing against one or something small would be a better compromise than testing against a super large model under the alternative. It's true that you, you are not uh, getting the right parameter under the alternative or the right model under the alternative, but perhaps this is not a big concern in, in this case. You want higher power and control size, of course, under the, under the null. The problem here is maybe it's choosing the orders of the alpha and beta parameters here, where is the P, Q, or Q1, Q2 right orders. Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, this test is based on the assumption that in principle, this choice of the ARMA model has already cleaned the linear dependence. So you have a, a clean autocorreogram, and you still wonder whether you, your innovations are really non-predictable, and don't have any nonlinearities like arch or this type of things. So, so this in this sense is a complement of this of these boss and peers. It's not doing the same, the same job. It's something in between boss and peers, um, these auto programs on the squares and angle type of uh, tests and, and this type of things. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, and well, we need also some regulatory conditions, mixing, 
Um, in principle, some waiting on, on the on the on the lags to get some theory when you estimate models under the null or the martingale different that you don't need that. So, Carlos, so that, maybe yeah. this is the right time to ask this. But yeah. in a way, I mean, so you, are, you have a weaker condition than the IID, right? But yeah. if the asymptotics, I mean, something has to give, right? So did you have to make something stronger? Like, you know, like what? A, a uh, well, the something stronger is that, of course, it's not, it's not for free. I'm not assuming only Martin a difference. If a system, as you see, I need some missing condition to get the theory because I need to control for this type of dependence. And with the martingale, you cannot control for that. So there are different ways of doing. In fact, in, in not in home paper, but in the in Hona Lee paper, that is a subsequent paper with, with, with Lee, on the martingale different testing with residual, they use some condition on a being a possible to approximate the data by a, by a martingale and so on and so forth. So you need to put, to put some further restrictions on the dependence. So it's not true that it's only about martingale. It's a martingale plus something else. Well, some con non parametric control of the dependence. In my case, mixing did the simple uh, job simple. So, so I got that. And also, maybe it's a loss in efficiency because uh, you're using less information. So, you cannot use maximum likelihood and you cannot beat that. Okay. So, definitely, there is no, there is no warranty that uh, my estimates are, are optimal. And therefore, the, the, the derivatives, the li likelihood ratio, Lagrange multiplier, in principle, should not be efficient by, by any means. So, in this case, I, the idea is to propose something more robust, but of course it's not fully general. In one hand, it's not efficient. Either. So the price is a compromise between efficiency and robustness, as, as in many cases. And this definitely is one, is one situation. Okay, so just in the remaining time, I have a look to the, to, to the, to the uh, numerical work. So some uh, information about simulations and, uh, and the replication of the empirical application of planning. Okay, so the setup is basically the same as they have. So I only concentrate on ARMA models. And they concentrate on T4 distributions, only symmetric ones. And I also in introduce a, a strongly asymmetric one, chi square one. So this is very, very asymmetric. Okay. And in principle, the chi square has lighter la ties than the, than the T. So non asymmetric here is imposed through kurtosis, strong, very strong kurtosis. Uh, this has only three moments, I believe. And uh, K-square has no problems with the moments, but it's very, very strong asymmetric with so little degrees of freedom, right? And we use ID data and martingale difference, uh, where we introduce conditional heteroclasticity through a, a, gacha, a gacha model with a pretty strong uh, dependence. So these are the dependence, so 0.9 at the sum, so so quite a strong dependence, and we see that this has a high impact on the performance of the test, definitely. Okay, so here I'm going to report only 200 tests, 200 and 500 uh, long time series. And in some case, we need to choose a bandwidth that we set as simple a, as this. So similar to the one you can use in the spectral analysis and so on. And the model parameters are the same as in LAN. So to make this uh, comparable, but recall that they, they exploit that the data is ID and the data is T distributed. So they know the true distribution and that the data, the innovations are independent. So this is like the super strong benchmark. I'm not going to report the, the numbers here, but I tell you that the numbers are much better than mine in terms of power definitely. Uh, uh, okay, and also, as I said in my paper, I have a version imposing IID, not only uh, matching and difference, so I run in, in parallel the test for, for for the loss function imposing ID or the loss function imposing Martin ID. So this is the results. So there's a bunch of numbers. Okay, so let's, these are the, the, the parameter values. So here, as you see, uh, these ARMA models, general ARMA models, because the parameters are different. And these ones are all passed because both AER and MA are the same, the same model. Uh, both numbers are the null in, for each of the hypotheses being tested. So the first block is the test for all pass. The null of all pass against, against general alarm. So that's why they are the sizes and these are the, the, the power numbers. And the other ones are test of martingale against a restricted arm, all pass, or general alarm. And we have like three cases. The one is, is imposing truly independence, but not maximum likelihood, my, my loss function based on dependence measure. Okay. 
This one is using the Martingale difference loss function, but with independent data. So, so far it's fine because the data is satisfying Martingale difference. And this is the, the real uh, case where the data is Martingale difference because it's IID plus GARCH or an GARCH. Uh, and the loss function is the Martingale difference case. So using tensor size with the chi square that is this, this slide is, is, is more or less okay. Okay, not, not big problems in any of the other tests, not perfect. But uh, since that, uh, that, that at least for the larger sample size, things are okay. There's only 1,000 replications, so that's why there's only one decimal point here. Still, the convergence is not monotone. For instance, here is not, not converging uh, to the 5% uh, nominal level. And instead of power, is not is doing very similar these numbers. I can tell you to the ones that Lane obtained for the T distribution. So in this case, this is not a, a big loss, a big loss of power. Of course, they are considered only this case, let's say, only IID data using independence. So these numbers are similar to the ones, the ones they get. However, when I go to the to the T distribution, my results are not that good, are much worse. Both in size, and you see I have here quite big size distortions, and I'm in the way of investigating why this is the case. So I don't know still why I'm, I'm not converting over, over there for the for the old past test. For the matching difference uh, doing pretty well in general. Okay, the first line is doing is doing well and here as well. So I have problems with size for, for the matching difference. Uh, uh, one thing is that uh, the zero zero case seems to be even more difficult in this case because there are uh, more problems to estimate the, the model without any, any correlation. And instead of powers, you compare with I, I can go back uh, back, but it is I think it's not need. These numbers are more or less similar, not, not better, but not, not different. But however, in this case, especially for this part, when we test for the Martingale difference, the robustified test has little, little power. Basically, they are not they are finding nothing. Okay. So it seems that, uh, that uh, my test worked very well for a symmetry series, a symmetric series, but hard, have a hard time in order to find out information for kurtosis. So kurtosis seems to provide much, much less information that, that the symmetry for my test. Uh, I can tell you uh, Lane had powers here similar to these numbers. Okay, so, so, okay, so the performance of that depends much on the, on the marginal distribution of the innovations. And a symmetry third moment seems to be much better. Okay, what about the empirical application? So this is the application of Lane. So these are um, uh, 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 market returns for different portfolios using uh, stocks in the in the usual markets. Okay, uh, they are taken from, from French uh, web page. Okay, so I think I have uh, I have the same data the same data as, as Lane used for comparison. I have I could get more data, but I received it to the same one that I have. So it's a pretty long time series of monthly data. So they base their choice on terms of not having much heteroscedasticity because they impose in independence. So they say that money data, as we know, is less heteroscedastic the higher the data, daily or hourly or things like this. And, all, and, and also because they think that the distribution was a good match for, for this data. So in principle, uh, the data is tailored for the application, for the method more than for, for mine. So that's why it's a good. It's a good uh, benchmark for, for me. So recall that I'm agnostic about the distribution of the shocks and, and higher the dynamics in CDA. So about the estimation, I don't want to spend much time here, but uh, but I have estimates under independence and marking a difference. And my estimates are in for most time series or portfolios are, are quite different. So for the bottom 30% uh, are doing similar in both cases, but for the other ones, uh, the numbers are quite different, both for the RMAC model and restricted and for, for the old past As you see, when you impose non-invertibility, the ARMA model is already all pass. So these parameters are pretty close. So that's why the restricted that we see model cannot be rejected because this, in this case, not much perhaps, but you see these numbers are very close for both for models. Um, these are similar to, to LANE output in terms of model. You see in different specification tests, uh, our new one or home uh, test based on residuals, we see that independence model, independence-based model have some trouble. 
uh, more at least than, than the marking and difference based ones. Because uh, this specification test finds nothing except for this particular case. It's a very clear rejection, but, uh, but in principle, seems that the model is doing pretty well. Okay. So marking and difference seems a safer way of modeling that. And let's go for the test. So these are the tests. And as we see, yeah, and the either hypothesis, the old pass model is not rejected. Okay. So basically, there is no linear predictability in the series, but in principle, there is some predictability. In general, it will be non-linear because the the uh, the uh, all pass model is not rejected in favor of the of the alma. So this agrees uh, under both hypotheses. And, uh, and, as, and for the Martingale different test, all these blocks, we see that the Martingale difference is, is well rejected by all methods. Okay, here is close to regression of 5%. Here is maybe it's the, it's, the, it's the model that didn't provide a good fit. So maybe it's because it's related with, with that fat. Okay, and this is that independence is not, automatically is not a big deal, but the, the, regional, the, the regressionability property of the test is important because this is home test against Martingale difference. And as we see, uh, home test is able to reject the, the, the independence. No problem as the directional test we have here, the Lagrange multiplier or even the wall. But the uh, home test for Martingale difference is not able to reject. While our Martingale difference test is able to reject very clearly uh, the Martingale difference, okay, uh, in both against ARMA or against all pass. So we see that uh, using this direction test a little bit in the direction of Majid. So here is the model without, rest without no parameters. Here is a model with one parameter. This is that these directional Lagrange multiplier tests are finding more power to be able to, to reject the, the Martingale difference. In this case, in principle, uh, in favor of an all pass, that is the model that is not rejected. So the conclusion is that yes, this is predictability, but seems to be nonlinear. Okay. Um, perhaps there are arch effects, but because this no, we are not testing against this laterally. This will be another another complement. But typically you can expect that all pass is associated with these uh, arch effects. And I know. So I have this slide for conclusions, but there's not much uh, much need to say. The only thing is that uh, uh, we should look at more at how to improve the power. Uh, investigating the, the weightings of, of the of the lags or the all these functions or using pseudo likelihood ratio tests based on, on these loss functions. That is would be a good way of trying to improve this power that seems in, at least for some distribution is not doing as as well as we could expect at least at the beginning. Okay, so thank you. So, so you have questions, thank comments? Thank you very much, uh, Carlos. Well, thanks a lot, uh, Carlos, for, for the great uh, presentation and all the questions we had. So uh, I'm going to stop the recording and then open the, the discussion. Uh, so okay. if uh, uh, yeah. people have questions or maybe our guest uh, panelists have some uh, points to add. So, but uh, uh, yeah.